It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Yes, it is. Here we go with chapter two, lesson number four, trig functions. Yeah. Now, trig functions we have already come across in the past are obviously sine, cos, and tan. But I'm going to introduce you to some more. So if we have y equals cos x, we could easily graph that. And this is what it looks like. But we could equally graph 1 over cos x. And if you graph 1 over cos x, well, it looks just like this. And we call 1 over cos x sec x. Equally, if we have the graph of y equals sine x, well, you know it looks something just like this. And if you graph 1 over sine x, well, it looks like this. And we call 1 over sine x cosec x. And finally, if you have the graph of tan x, well, you could then graph 1 over tan x. And 1 over tan x looks like this. And we call 1 over tan x cot x. So we've just been introduced to sec x, cosec x, and cot x. So a quick recap. This is what you need to know. So obviously, from years and years ago, we know that sine over cos is equal to tan. Make sure that is one that you are familiar with. We also know now that 1 over sine x is called cosec x. We know 1 over cos x is sec x. You got it. And we know 1 over tan x. Well, if you think about it, tan is really sine over cos. So 1 over tan would be that flipped. It would be cos over sine. But we call 1 over tan x, or cos over sine, cot x. So we need to remember these and we need to know, uh, we need to be able to evaluate them. For example, we have to evaluate cosec pi over 3, or sec pi over 4, or cot squared pi over 6. So let's go to each one of these. First one, if we were to evaluate then, cosec pi over 3. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to think, right, well, what is cosec equal to? And we know cosec is 1 over sine. So instead of cosec pi over 3, we could write that as 1 over sine pi over 3. And then from there, if we have 1 over sine pi over 3, well, the next step, Patrick, would be, yeah, just work out sine of pi over 3. Think about it in terms of degrees. So 1 uh, sine of pi over 3, you can use your exact value triangles if I make this a bit bigger. But sine of pi over 3 is going to be? Yeah, it's just going to be root 3 over 2. So we'd end up with 1 over root 3 over 2. And then from there, well, if we've got 1 over root 3 over 2, that would become 2 over root 3. Remember, if you've got a fraction and then you're dividing by a fraction, you can move the very bottom up to the top. So it become 2 over root 3. And that would be your answer. If we were evaluating sec pi over 4, well, again, how would you go about doing that, Pavel? Brilliant, yes. You need to think, right, well, sec is 1 over cos, so that would become 1 over cos, pi over 4. And then from there, once again, you're thinking I've got cos of pi over 4. Think about that in terms of degrees, and then think about your exact value triangle. So the cos of pi over 4 is going to be? Good, it's just 1 over root 2. So 1 over root 2, so you'd end up with 1 over 1 over root 2. Again, you've got a fraction, you're dividing by a fraction, move the very bottom up to the top, and that will give you root 2 over 1, which is the same as root 2. So that would be sec pi over 4. And finally, for that third example, if you were evaluating cot squared of pi over 6, well, really, again, you need to think, well, it's cot. What is cot equal to? Well, cot is 1 over tan. So that's the same as 1 over tan squared pi over 6. Remember, tan squared means the tan of pi over 6 squared. So work out the tan of pi over 6. Again, you can use your exact value triangles. Tan of pi over 6, well, pi is 180. 180 divided by 6 is 30. So tan of 30 would be good. 1 over root 3. So you'd end up with 1 over, and that would become 1 over root 3 squared. From there, well, if you're squaring 1 over root 3, square the 1, you get 1. Square the root 3, you get 3. So you get 1 over 1 third. Again, you can move the very bottom up to the very top, so it would become 3, and that would be your answer. Obviously, this chapter, though, is to do with differentiation, so we need to be able to differentiate. What's that? Connor, you're asking a question. Do I know any math chat-up lines? This is a bit random, but yes, I do. Here's one for you, Connor. If you were a trig function, you would be 
1 over cos C. I'll leave that with you. There you go. Good luck with that, Connor. Okay, so differentiating trig functions. Here we go. So, if we have f of x and it would be sine x, well, we could work out f dash x. We can differentiate sine x. And if you differentiate sine x, you get, say it with me, cos x. Woo! If you differentiate cos x, you would end up with negative sine x. Yeah! If you differentiate tan x, you would get, ooh, this is a new one, but you would end up with sec squared x. If you differentiate cosec x, you would end up with negative cosec x cot x. Nice and easy. If you differentiate sec x, you get sec x tan x. And if you differentiate cot x, you get negative cosec squared x. This is given on the formula sheet, so you do not have to remember it. You obviously have to know sine and cos, but the rest of them are given. And just remember, if you do have any problems, really, we're always going to be working with radians. So always use radians in advanced higher. Let's try one of the examples then when we are differentiating. So, example one, differentiate y equals tan of 3x. Sugra, what are you thinking for this one? Yeah, you're right, you would have to apply the chain rule. Why, Sugra, would you apply the chain rule? Yeah, because it's a tan of, and then it's 3x, just in brackets there. That's what you're really thinking. You're taking the tan of the whole thing, the whole of the 3x. So apply the chain rule. So, Sugra, keep going then. So if you differentiate outside the brackets, tan would become sec squared. Good. So keep the brackets as they are, so we'd get sec squared 3x. But then what you've got to do, Sugra is perfectly right, you have to multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. So d by dx means we're going to differentiate with respect to x, this part here, this 3x. So we're differentiating the 3x, and obviously the dot means multiply, so we multiply by that. If you differentiate 3x with respect to x, it becomes 3, so we'd have sec squared 3x times 3. And then from there, we can just move the 3 to the front, so we'd have 3 sec squared 3x, and that would be your first one. Next one, example two, differentiate y equals cosec 4x. To here, what are you thinking? Good, again, you would have to use the chain rule because we've got cosec, oh, so cosec of that whole thing, the 4x. So you're imagining brackets around that and you're applying the chain rule. So differentiate cosec 4x. Well, first of all, differentiate outside the brackets. So cosec, if you differentiate it, it would become negative cosec cot x. So we'd have negative cosec, keep the brackets as they are, and then cot, keep the brackets as they are. So what we're doing is we've got cosec x, but instead of x, we've got 4x. So we'd have negative cosec the 4x times cot of the 4x, which is replacing x with this 4x. So that is what we'd get if we differentiate outside the brackets, but then we're applying the chain rule. So you have to multiply by the derivative of the 4x, the bit in the brackets. Obviously, if we differentiate the 4x, we'd end up with 4. So that is what we would get. And then we can just move the 4 to the front. So we'd have negative 4 cosec 4x cot 4x. And that is your answer. Example three, differentiate y equals sec squared x. Cameron, what are you thinking for this one? Good, first thing you're thinking is that sec squared x means the sec of x squared. Good, so with that, again, we'd have to apply the chain rule because we'd be differentiating outside the brackets, then inside and multiplying together. So if we differentiate outside the brackets, well, we know the two would come down, inside the brackets would stay, and then the power would decrease to one. So that is us differentiating outside the brackets. Cameron, after that, you would, good, you would differentiate what's in the brackets. So we're differentiating sec x. So two, sec x to the power of one, you could just write it as two sec x, but then the derivative of sec x, just look at your wee table here, if you differentiate sec x, you get sec x tan x. So you'd be multiplying that by sec x tan x. From there, you'd have two times sec x times sec x. Well, if you've got sec x times sec x, you'd have sec x squared. So really, you'd have sec squared x, and you're multiplying that by tan x. And that is what you would get. Example four differentiate cot cubed 2x. So for this one, Lewis, help us out. Yeah, perfect, because you've got cot cubed 2x, really what we're th doing is we're thinking of that as cot 2x and then cubed. So for that again, 
we're going to have to apply the chain rule. So Lewis, help us out then, what would you do? Good, differentiate outside the bracket, so we're bringing the three down, taking one off the power, so you'd have three caught, two x to the power of two. And then what you've got to do is you have to multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. So if we differentiate, we are differentiating this caught of two x. Perfect. After that then, well, we've got three cot two x all squared, so that would become three cot squared two x. But then the derivative of cot two x, well, cot x, if you differentiate it, goes to negative cos x squared x. But if you think about it, we don't have cot x, we've got cot two x. So Lewis, what would you use again? The chain rule, brilliant. So from there, you'd have to use the chain rule again. So cot two x would become negative cos x squared two x, We'd keep that 2x just as it is, but then really you're imagining brackets just around here. So it's going to be the cot, uh, we differentiate to negative cos x squared, the 2x, we just keep the brackets just as they are, but then you multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets, which is where that times 2 comes from. After that, you can tidy that line up. You've got the negative here, you've got the 2 times 3, so that would make negative 6 at the start cot squared 2x would stay, and then we'd have a cos x squared 2x. And that's your answer. Example 5, differentiate y equals x to the power of 4 sec 2x. For this one, Fiona, what would you have to be doing? Product rule! Yes, you're perfectly right, Fiona. How do you know it's product rule? Perfect, because you're differentiating one function in terms of x times another function in terms of x. So for that, you are applying the product rule. So remember your product rule, if y equals u times v, then dy by dx would be u dash v plus u v dash. Perfect. So we need a u and a v. Fiona, help us out then. What would you have for u? Good, you would have x squared. And for v? Yeah, we've got our sec 2x. Remember, if you get them back to front, it makes no difference. Uh, but really, you tend to go from left to right. So if we differentiate u with respect to x, u dash would be 4x cubed. Perfect. And if we differentiate sec 2x, what would that give us? Well, if we differentiate sec, it goes to sec x tan x. But because we've got the 2x, it would go to sec 2x times tan 2x. But what would we have to do as well? You got it you'd have to multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. So, chain rule. If you differentiate 2x, you would get 2, so you'd be multiplying that by 2. Good. Uh, from there, just tidy that up by moving the 2 to the front. So 2 sec 2x tan 2x. dy by dx then. We are having to use the product rule, so u dash v plus u v dash. So u dash times v. We've got 4x cubed times sec 2x plus u times v dash. So we've got x to the power of 4 times all of this. And the way you'd probably write it is put any numbers first. So you've got the 2 there. You've also got that x to the power of 4. So 2x to the power of 4. And then put any trig terms after. So you've got the sec 2x tan 2x. Perfect. And that's what you would get from there. You could leave your answer as that, but really you should be getting into the habit of factorising. It may help you later on if you get a trickier question. Here you could take out a highest common factor of the 2x cubed sec 2x. You could take that out from the left and the right here. And that would leave you then with 2 plus x tan 2x. And that would be your final answer. Let's try one more. Example 6, differentiate y equals tan x over x squared. So for this one, Danielle, what are you thinking? Brilliant, yes. Tell everybody why. Good. Quotient rule. And you're using the quotient rule because you've got one function in terms of x divided by another function in terms of x. Danielle, you're a genius. High five. For this if y equals u over v, then dy by dx would be u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. And from there then, we can write down u and v. Remember, u is the function that's on the top, so u is going to be tan x, and v is the function on the bottom, so that would be x squared. From there then, if you differentiate tan, Danielle, you would get 6 squared x. Good. And if you differentiate x squared, Danielle, 2x. Good. 
that's what you would get. dy by dx then would be u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. If you put that in then, so u dash times v would be six squared x times x squared, or x squared, uh, six squared x, if we put it back to front, uh, just put the trig term last. Uh, take away u times v dash, so tan x times two x, remember, just put the trig term last. And then we're dividing that by v squared, which would be x squared, all squared. From there then, well, I suppose that x squared all squared would become, go on, Danielle, one more time, x to the power of four. Brilliant. So you'd have x squared, sec squared x, take away two x tan x, divided by x to the power of four. And then from there, well, if you think about it, every term has at least an x in it. So we can cancel an x from every single term. And if you do that, the x squared would drop to x, the x here would disappear, leaving you with, you with two tan x, and the x to the power of four would drop to x to the power of three. And that would be your final answer. High five, everybody. <laughs> Try some of these questions then. It is in the unit one workbook, page 22. Check your answers as you go. It's differentiating trig functions. Just remember, Sine over cos is tan, one over sine x, sine x is cosec x, one over cos is sec, and one over tan is cot. And if you differentiate, this differentiation table is given in the exam, apart from sine x and cos x. Good luck. And Connor, good luck with that chat bling. Woo! Bye.